having a 3D map of a patient's brain during brain surgery is nothing new for Washington University neurosurgeons, but this one-of-a-kind technique just got a huge boost with a $3.6 million grant from the National Cancer Institute, which is part of the National Institutes of Health. The creators of this 3D brain mapping technology now hope to improve and expand their software so that surgeons everywhere can use it. In neurosurgery, when we are taking out a brain tumor or we're doing an operation for epilepsy, as an example, we are going into the brain, sometimes taking out parts of the brain. And everybody's brain is a little bit different where function is located. Language areas tend to be somewhat variable where they're located from person to person. Sometimes, for instance, if you speak multiple languages, you can have multiple language sites in the brain. And so we really want to make sure to have the safest surgery possible that we identify where those functional areas are before surgery and during surgery. And that really led to kind of this new program and the software analytics that we've developed, which analyzes this data taken from the MRI. And it uses really some of the some really cutting edge mathematical techniques. Kind of in the media, you often hear about artificial intelligence. Well, it's a type of artificial intelligence methodology where we actually uh, use AI techniques to actually analyze the brain, uh, which is kind of cool, right? You know, you're using artificial intelligence to figure out where brain function is. The very technical name is the multi-layer perceptron, MLP. Uh, because that is actually the neural network technique that is used, it's the artificial intelligence technique. And so kind of shortening that, and we refer to it as the perceptron. Then we're kind of combining it with a technology that's really emerged over the last 10 years, which is called navigation. It's this idea of really creating a GPS for the brain, where basically you get an MRI and you're looking at the anatomy. So you really create a 3D model of the brain so that while you're in the, op in the operating room, you can say, okay, if, I, if I'm at this part of the brain, where is that with my map that I've created? But today, um, people know what, kind of the anatomy of the brain, but they don't know the function of the brain. And so we're gonna really kind of combine those. Where we're taking our advanced artificial intelligence techniques to map brain function and combining that with the GPS maps of the brain. So that not only does the surgeon know where they are in the brain, they know what that, that part of the brain does for the, for the patient. One of the great challenges has always been is how do we map these brain functions in people uh, in a way that you can do it easily and efficiently. For instance, today, if you want to map out speech during surgery, very often you have to wake the person up for surgery in the middle of surgery and have them talk and do electrical stimulation to the brain to identify those speech areas. Now, classically, you know, before surgery, people use what we call task-based functional MRI. And this, that's this idea of, say, you want to identify either a motor function or a speech function, you go into the MRI and you actually have them do a task. Tap their fingers or say words, and you look at metabolic changes in the brain that happen when they do that task. And it, it can be relatively time intensive, meaning it takes a, you know, maybe an hour to two hours to map those functions. Um, and oftentimes, if it's a patient with a brain tumor, it can be quite taxing because they're already kind of on the borderline, especially if we're worried about a tumor that may be near uh, those functional areas. And so, uh, again, can we do this without tasks? Um, and again, another area where it's important is kids can't do this. Uh, uh, small children, if you put them in an MRI scanner, they have to be sedated, so they can't participate. And so one of the fundamental questions that we asked early on was, can we map brain function in, without the person having to do anything? So that really led us down the pathway of using this notion of resting state functional MRI. As a radiologist, I was involved. I was also doing research in the lab, uh, in the neuroimaging lab here. And our lab became uh, very interested in this new version of, of functional MRI, which is called resting state fMRI. And in this version, we don't impose any task. The patient just is in the magnet, uh, staring at a cross, uh, just staring at something in the magnet, and not, not doing any task at all, just laying there. We were able to extract very interesting information about how the brain is organized and different systems in the brain. We start to look at these fluctuations in metabolic activity and how they correlate with each other, because the, that allows us to separate out different brain networks. This is a, an animation of, of that. So for instance, we can see kind of the motor network in blue, 
can see the language network in yellow and we can see the attention networks or default mode networks in red. And so looking at kind of the, these fluctuation in, in metabolism, which reflect fluctuations in brain activity that we, and how they are each distinct, it gives us a unique insight into resting state brain function. And by doing that, we then have the ability to identify these critical regions without the person doing anything. Actually, they don't even have to be awake. You know, they can be sedated. And so that allows us preoperatively to identify critical areas and make decisions to say, okay, this tumor or this seizure focus is close or not close to a critical area. So we've been working on this software uh, getting on five to seven years, and uh, we first implemented it here at Washington University around five years ago. Now, as a homegrown technology, it's not a you know, a, a commercially viable package. It's, you know, it's something that we've created specific to Washington University. You know, we, we have coupled navigation with the resting state functional MRI. We really need to cr uh, create something that is uh, fully packaged and uh, mobile. That's why we, we partnered with Medtronic in this grant so that any neurosurgeon who then in the future says, hey, you know, I want to both map function and locate function, that they, they then have a freestanding system that can do it. Myself and Dr. Joshua Shimoni are co principal investigators on this grant, but it's really a very large team. I think yeah, a lot of credit should be given to kind of a graduate student who worked in my laboratory, Carl Hacker. Other collaborators such as uh, Avi Snyder, who's really been doing this for many decades. Um, Dan Marcus, who created the kind of IT infrastructure, kind of the informatics to make this happen. Really to get a clinical tool up and running like this, you know, this is very translational research. So we're trying to take something that was developed in the lab and very quickly apply it to, pay, to real patients in the, in the hospital. And uh, really a huge part of this effort and in, in the actual application is, is done you know, by other people in the radiology department. You know, some of my colleagues, Dr. Benzinger, Dr. Tammy Benzinger, and Dr. Michelle Miller-Thomas, and, and they really uh, ran with the clinical side of this. And that is going to hopefully really change how we take care of patients across, you know, not just in the United States, but across the world. And, uh, and it'll make it safer, and it'll make it more, and surgery more effective. Have a much better understanding of each individual person's brain for a number of different applications. Understanding, for instance, people's depression and how they can be potentially responsive to different types of therapies, uh, potentially diagnostics for uh, epilepsy. So there's a number of possibilities that this is going to go and so that is deep and profound you know both professional but more importantly personal significance that you know we can help human beings going forward.